Hi everyone, my name is Austin and today I'm going to be giving you a full tour and showing you around my van. So here we go. So this is a 2010 Ford Transit Connect XLT. Um, I originally bought it used from a company that was using it as a work vehicle. Uh, I don't live out of it full time. Um, I just got this more for travel. Yeah, I'm a runner, so I use this to go to races and train in different places. So starting with the outside, the only changes I made were adding the fantastic fan up on the top here. Um, that fan is decent. Um, if I were to do this again, I would probably get a better fan just because this one's not very powerful. Um, that's just because I was trying to find the cheapest van, uh, fan I could get pretty much. Um, other than that, the only change I made to the outside of the van is adding this little porthole window in. Um, I would also probably get a better one of these if I were to do it again. The only real issue with it is that it has this little ledge here and if it snows or rains, water will sit here and slowly drip in through the window right there. It's not fully sealed. So now coming around here into the front. Haven't really changed anything up here either. Um, it's basically just all original. And I do have a curtain here behind the cab just to add privacy in the back, which I'll show you now. So in the back here, um, starting in the front, the original vehicle has a little plastic shelf up here, which you can see. Um, and I extended that all the way back um, just to have extra storage. Uh, this normally would store all my clothes, um, camping gear, toiletries, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it has a lot of space because it goes all the way to the front of the car. And it's the full width of the van as well. Um, yeah, and I built these little poles out of old rock climbing rope. And then the other side of the curtain here, um, I just sewed little magnets onto this curtain I made and it just sticks right to the screws that hold the cabinet together and hold it up it works really well um, but so the curtain I just got like a thick fleece material on one side and then this back side is just like a, a light colored canvas um, and as I travel I buy patches places and sew those on um, just to kind of keep track of where I've been just kind of a fun way to decorate as I travel. Um, so now also up here in the front, here I'll pull this out of the way. Down here between the two seats, I have this little tiny cabinet here that opens up. Uh, inside I just store random things that I need quick easy access to, like extra plates and blankets and hammocks and whatever else I need. Um, so also coming right in here in the door, um, below the floor here, I have this little storage area, which is where I store a bunch of shoes. Um, I can normally fit about like four pairs or something in here. And I also have a dog water bowl. Um, so then the flooring here, this is all uh, laminate flooring that I just got from Home Depot. Um, it works really well. It's uh, really easy to clean it's just a plastic um, but the thing I have noticed with it is that it expands and shrinks as the temperature changes so if I go somewhere really hot it will expand and kind of bubble up slightly but once the temperature goes back down it it's back to normal and just fine so also here on the back of the seats in these little pouches I store these screens that I made so for these screens, I just used window screens and then I, again, just sewed little magnets to it. And these I can open up. And then I can open them up and stick them around the doors here to keep bugs out if I'm camping somewhere with lots of bugs. Um, and that has actually been really helpful. 
I definitely recommend doing this. It's super cheap and easy. You just buy a roll of um, window screen at Home Depot and some little uh, donut shaped magnets here. And yeah, sew them up and cut it to the right size. So now come straight in. I have the bed here. Um, this uh, has the slotted system that most people do in vans like this. So it does slide all the way out to the cabinet. Um, and then these back cushions here come down in and uh, make the full bed. So when it's all laid out, it's about a twin size bed. So underneath the bed here, I have three little cabinets. Um, they all open up like this. Uh, I can store all kinds of things down there. It's the full size of the bed. Um, if I were to rebuild this van, I also would probably try to put in um, sh uh, drawers down here because these little cabinets can be kind of hard to open up and reach back in there if there's stuff in the back that I'm trying to get to. Um, also on these cabinets I use little rock climbing cans, little pieces off of those for my poles. So my ceiling up here, um, this was all a, a thin pine beadboard, um, like little tongue and groove panels that I got. Uh, they're normally used for like bathroom walls, um, but I just use it for the ceiling because it was really thin and lightweight. Um, and I just painted it all white. And then I put in these little LED lights. Uh, there's three of them here on the ceiling, and then I have one underneath the, the upper kitchen cabinet. Um, yeah, those are just 12 volt. And then also in the ceiling here is my fan. Um, it can blow in or suck air out. Um, and it has three different speeds. It works pretty well, um, but yeah, not really the greatest fan. I'd recommend buying one a little better if you're doing this. So also up here in the upper cabinet, keep, store this little remote, um, and this turns on my extra lights, which run all the way along the ceiling here. Um, it's just a thin little LED street strip, which I hid behind the, the trim along the edge. And it's just a nice little accent to the van, if I don't wanna just have my bright lights on. So now on the other side of the van over here, I have my kitchen set up. So on the side of the cabinet up here, I have my switches um, that turn on the main LED lights around the van. Um, and then the switch on the end here turns on the little uh, 12 volt USB charging spot. And then this third switch here turns on the water pump to be able to turn on the sink. So this cabinet here, um, the countertops are pine. Um, it was just two big boards that we glued together to make a full-size countertop. And then the sink is um, just a salad bowl that I, I got and cut a hole in the bottom and put this plug in. Um, and then the actual faucet is just a little miniature faucet that I got online. Um, it's only cold water. It doesn't have two separate nozzles for hot and cold. So to turn on the sink, I just turn on my switch up here, which activates the pump. Yeah, that's the sink. And then also on the counter here, I have these little uh, spice jars that I just uh, screwed the, the lids to the ceiling up here. And it holds them up. And then over here, um, this was rig originally made to be a plant holder, but um, since I'm not living in this full time, it's hard to really keep a plant alive. So I pretty much just use it as a cup holder. And so my backsplash here, this is actual, like real marble tiles. Um, 
yeah, when I was building out the van, um, I could have done something a lot easier and cheaper, but I really like the look of this, so I decided to go for it, and I think it turned out pretty good. So, with the rest of the cabinet down below the sink, I have uh, my water storage. So, I'm, I have two um, six gallon tanks here. One is my fresh water, and then the other one is my dirty gray water. And then also down here, I store like my broom, um, a little propane canister, fire extinguisher, towels, and stuff. And then also mounted on the wall back there is my water pump. Um, it's just a 12 volt pump. And then I have it split right here. Uh, so one side goes to the sink and the other side will go to the hot water heater, which I'll show you later. So also on the sink here, I added a little uh, tube down here on the outside. Um, so if I'm somewhere where I can dump my water right outside, I just have a hose that I can attach to the end of this, and then I flip a little valve under the sink, and it'll dump the water out this way instead of going into my dirty gray water tank. So now on the other side down here, um, this is where I keep my cooler. Um, so I have an Arctic 45 cooler. Um, it works great. It holds ice for a long time. Um, and then up top here, I have these two little bins, which is where I'd normally store my dry food. Um, and then if I need to get to the, the stuff in the cooler, I can either just open this up and still be able to open it a little bit to reach my hands in. Or if I really need to get in, I can just pull out these tubs real quick and get full access into the cooler. Now up above the sink here, uh, I have this little cabinet which stores all my silverware and uh, cups and soap and sponges and towels and everything like that. And all these little um, poles are made from old rock climbing nuts. And then over here on this side of the cabinet, um, I have these three little cabinets that open up just to get quick, easy access to stuff. Um, yeah, inside this one I have a little mirror so I can put in contacts or do whatever I need right here. And yeah, this one just scissors and spatulas and lighters and stuff. And then the whole side of this cabinet actually folds down and then I use this little string and attach it up here to the ceiling. Um, and so this actually gives me a whole extra set of counter space. So inside this cabinet, um, this is where I store all my other cooking stuff like pots and pans, um, yeah, paper towels and oven mitts and all my other little measuring cups and spoons and stuff. Um, and then on the side here, this is my uh, camp stove. It's just a, a cheap Coleman propane stove that you can get at Walmart. Um, but I can pull that out and I can set that right on this little uh, countertop. And then if I need to cook inside, I can. Um, and right up here on the ceiling is where I have my fan. So if I just open that up and turn on the air, I can have it suck the air out and it'll make it safe to cook in here. And to get even extra airflow, um, I can open my little porthole window over here, which has these little knobs. Just untwist. And then the whole porthole opens up. So if I have that open and the fan, it sucks all the air in and out the top right past my stove on the counter there. So my wall over here with the porthole in it, um, this is all beetle kill pine, um, which is a, a just a regular type of pine, which uh, beetles will kind of get into it and eat it, which causes like a fungus to grow in it, which makes this kind of dark uh, gray streaking in it. 
So I installed all that um, at this diagonal curve or diagonal angle, um, which was a lot of extra work, uh, but I think it, it looks really unique and interesting. All right, now, so going into the back of the van here, there's my dog rider. Back here, um, so on the inside of the doors, I added these, this bead board just for extra design, just to make it look a little better. Um, this I painted all in um, like a waterproof deck paint. So if I have these doors open and it starts raining, it won't mess up that wood. And so also on these windows here, um, I made these covers, which are just reflectix wrapped in uh, fabric. And then I sewed magnets into the fabric also, so I can just stick it up into the windows. And I made one of those actually for all the windows in this van. Uh, even the little porthole has one, so I can block out all the light if I need to. So also in the back here, um, there's just another little access to the to under the bed all that storage um, and all these cabinets have little magnetic latches that hold them closed uh, which yeah it works well while I'm driving so things don't bounce out and open up right inside the door here this is where I have my hot water here um, with this I can take warm showers if I need um, all I have to do is unhook this shower head second and then I can hang it right here from the door and then I can shower right outside the van um, and so this runs off of D batteries um, which just go in right here and then it heats the water using propane um, and that's what this black tube is so I have it just running down here behind the cooler so I can just pull this out and attach propane tank it was originally designed to use the big, um, like 20 pound propane tanks. Um, I didn't really have enough room to use one of those. So I got a little adapter in here just so I can use those little green propane canisters. And it actually works pretty well for a quick, warm, hot shower. And then I also have a, a switch back here to turn on the water pump so I don't have to reach all the way inside to turn on the water down below my hot water heater um, this is just another access to my cooler so if I'm buying groceries or something I can easily slide the whole cooler out the back here to load everything in um, or also I can slide it out just a tiny bit here and then um, I can open up the drain plug and drain out all the, all the water once the ice melts so the last thing I have in the back here is my secret little hidden bench. This is what I've had the most number of questions about out of pretty much everything in the van. So this is just a little bench that I made. Um, and I designed it so these cushions would also fit on it. So I can have a little outdoor couch. Um, this was all just made out of uh, these metal tubes and expanded steel here um, which I welded with my dad unfortunately you can't just buy it anywhere um, yeah but so it works by having these little L brackets that slide into this other little metal tube that we cut a notch out of and yeah that's pretty much it and it slides down underneath the floor So now coming into the driver's side door here, this is where I have my whole electrical system. Uh, this is kind of underneath the bed and also behind the driver's seat. Uh, so this is my auxiliary battery. It's 100 amp hours, um, which has worked plenty for me because um, I don't charge a whole lot of stuff. And then also down here, I have a battery isolator. Uh, this is what charges my auxiliary battery when I drive. I don't have solar or anything. Um, just when I drive, this will kick in and uh, start charging this auxiliary battery. 
And then if my main car battery dies, I can actually just push this button right here and it'll use my auxiliary battery to jump start the, the main car battery, which is really nice. And then I also have a whole fuse panel for all my lights and water pump and fan and everything, uh, just in case there's an issue. Um, and then I also have a circuit breaker here, which I still need to mount to the wall, but this goes from uh, the main car battery to this battery, just in case something um, overcharges or whatever, it'll break the circuit instead of messing everything up. And then this is just more access underneath the bed from behind. Um, I don't have a whole lot down there right now, but yeah. So that's pretty much it. Um, this van took me about a year to build out, but it could be done a whole lot cheaper. Uh, I just didn't have a whole lot of time because I was doing it slowly on weekends as I was going to school. And it also took me about $2,000 to build out, but that could also be done a whole lot cheaper um, if you use other materials that are a lot cheaper. I hope you liked it. If you have any more questions, just leave those in the comments below and I'll try to get to those as soon as possible. Um, also be sure to leave uh, links in the description to all the products I use to build this. Um, yeah, other than that, if you want to follow me on any of my adventures, just follow me on Instagram.